of the uh, Committee of the Whole, Champaign County Board. It is uh, Tuesday, December 11th, and I'd like, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I'd like um, roll call, please. Alex? Present. Berkson? Present. Carter? Here. Coart? Esri? Here. Harper? Here. Hartke? Here. James? Here. Jay? Here. Kibler? Here. Kurtz? Oh, Here. Langenheim. Here. Maxwell. Here. McGuire. Here. Michaels. Here. Mitchell. Here. Petrie. Are you here? Quisenberry. Here. Richards. Here. Rosales. Here. Schrader. Here. Schwartz. And Kurtz. Here. All right, like approval of the minutes, please. So moved. Uh, Mr. Alex, second. Mr. James, uh, any changes? All in favor? Wait, uh, I'm, so, oh, I'm sorry, Ms. Petrie. Uh, which minutes are we approving? The ones We're that are in the our committee pack? Committee November 8th and November 13th to be uh, distributed. I move to separate the, that so we approve them individually. Second. I'm sorry. Second by Mr. Quisenberry. Okay. Um, all in favor of uh, separating the question? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We'll approve the minutes. Committee of the whole, November 8th. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved by Ms. Petrie. I have a second. Second by Langenhoff. Mr. Langenhoff. Any discussion on those minutes? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Committee of the Whole Minutes, November 13th. Will I have a motion? Motion to approve. Mr. James. Second. Second by, by Ashford Berkson. Uh, any comments, discussion? Ms. Petrie. Uh, I'd like to amend the motion uh, to table this for approval at our county board meeting so we have time to read these. No second. Okay. Uh, all in favor of the uh, minutes being approved today and now? Right. Well, um, we're sent out by email. Uh, this afternoon? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. No, I've seen them before. So. Okay. All right. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, I need approval of the agenda and the addendum. So moved. So moved by Mr. J. Second. Second by Mr. Kibble. I pronounce your name correctly, sir. You did, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Quisenberry. <laughs> uh, do I have a second on that? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Need a second. Okay. Um, any changes, discussion on the agenda? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Public participation, we have two this evening. Uh, first up would be Mr. Ron Peters. Uh, please. Uh, I'll, I'll speak out and uh, Mr. Drew can speak and go first. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Don Altman, please step to the podium. Thank you. Uh, hit the button. There's a button right in front of you, sir, in the middle. And the light. There you go. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the County Board, my name is Don Utman. I reside at 208 Pell Circle in Urbana. Three and a half years ago, the County Board appointed me to the board of the Champaign-Urbana Mass Transit District to fill the unexpired term of Tom Burns. Uh, that term expires at the end of this month. I have applied for a reappointment to the board, um, having thoroughly enjoyed these three and a half years on the county board and feeling that I can continue to be of service to the community in this role. I'm here tonight to thank you for appointing me three and a half years ago 
and simply to say that I would very much appreciate your support of my application for reappointment. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Peters. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Ronald Peters, uh, Southeast uh, Champaign. I chair the uh, MTD uh, Board of Trustees, and I'd just like to say that uh, Don Oakman has been a very active member of our board. Uh, we are going uh, through the process of uh, replacing uh, Bill Volk, the managing director, who's uh, been there almost 40 years, and this is a very complex uh, uh, process, and Don has been very active and <coughs> an active participant in that, and I urge your uh, approval of his appointment later in your agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peter. All right, let's move on. Uh, communications. All right. I have, I'm sorry, did anybody raise their hand? Uh, Mr. Holcomb. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I know this is a bit unorthodox, but I'd like to uh, let the board know that tonight's meeting will be, for the first time, streamed live onto the internet through uh, a nice collaborative project between the county's IT department, Andy Rhodes is here, uh, the physical plant department, the treasurer, my office, and the administrative office. So thank you very much for your cooperation. It was one of the primary goals of this room remodel to be able to do that. So for those of you that are out there that don't have Comcast and would like to enjoy the county board meetings as much as we all do, you can now watch them through the county's website. Thank you. Okay, I have some. Um, first, I'd like to um, ask in uh, moving forward with our uh, agenda and with the uh, goals of our entire board that uh, I would like to meet with each one of the uh, county board members uh, individually. I would like them, and I will be passing out a clipboard with their uh, with open hours that I am going to be meeting. If you can't come to the my office, I'll come to you. Um, I'd like you to bring three goals that you'd like to accomplish over the next year, so that uh, we can discuss the future of uh, the board and uh, some direction besides nursing home and jail and the others that we're working on. So I'm going to pass this around, and I would like to have. Uh, Individuals meet with me with three goals. Thank you. Uh, second, I'd like to uh, announce that uh, I attended the drug court graduation yesterday. Uh, this has been one of the most successful diversion programs in the state of Illinois. Uh, in fact, uh, Judge Ford has just been nominated and appointed the president of the state of Illinois drug court. Uh, in the last since the inception of this program, 194 graduates have come out of the drug court. Hundreds of felons, uh, felonies have been prevented over these years, uh, and we have tracked these graduates for five years. 84% of these graduates stay on the straight and narrow. They do not return to crime or drug use. That is an extraordinary, extraordinary uh, percentage and I want to congratulate Judge Ford, Judge DeFanis, and the entire drug court staff for their efforts in this diversion program. It has been an extraordinary success. And third, uh, I'm going to be making some appointments tonight. Uh, I'm disregarding this letter. Uh, tonight, we have a responsibility to this community. We have a responsibility to your constituents. You've been voted here, not on your personal agenda, but on the agenda of this community. I intend to govern that way. Uh, I don't care if you're an R or a D. Your goal here is the residents of this county. They are your constituents, and you have sworn an oath to do the job that you are sitting in this chamber for. And I will appoint everyone to a seat, and I expect those to put in those hours. People out there in the public don't understand the hours we put in on an individual basis for this opportunity to sit here as representatives of our county. Hours, hundreds of hours are put in. We spend hours here sometimes, and then somebody says, well, they go home and they don't do anything. But I can only tell you that from my personal experience, most of you put in more hours than you put in at your job. And many of you have full-time jobs during the day. I'm just lucky enough to be 72 and still around and have retired, so I have a lot of hours. But I would like to tell you how important, and this public, and I'd like to, it to be reiterated in the newspapers, how hard you guys work at a very low, if, any, if you want to call it, uh, salary. 
Uh, but uh, I'll be making these appointments this evening, and I hope that all of you will take your responsibilities seriously and that we move forward with the business of the county and not any personal agendas. Thank you. Um, today, I had the pleasure of going to Decatur for the bid award, bid opening of the county's municipal electricity aggregation program. And I am happy to announce to you that, um, well, first of all, I'll tell you the Ameren base rate per kilowatt hour right now is 0 0.056. And the rate that the county will offer to those in the unincorporated areas will be 0 0.03999 which is a 28.6% reduction. So I think that was very good news, and I just wanted you all to be aware of it. Thanks. Okay. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, I would like uh, the Chair of Justice Social Service, Ms. Berkson, please step up to the chair and start with your committee report. Thank you. First, I will tell you not to give you an award. Uh, no, EM, Emergency Management yeah. Agency. And yeah. John Carlson is here. John, if you and, and the other Mr. people want to come up. Please, we're getting an award this evening. Yeah, uh, sir, would you please introduce yourself? Thank you. Can you turn on the microphone? Yeah, turn, uh, hit the button. There you yep. go. Got it. Uh, my name is Chris Miller. I'm the Warning Coordination Meteorologist at the National Weather Service in Lincoln. Uh, I am the primary liaison at uh, the National Weather Service in Lincoln with emergency management uh, in 35 counties in central and eastern Illinois. Um, county board members, uh, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am very honored to be here this evening to recognize Champaign County as a National Weather Service Storm Ready County. Uh, now, the declaration of a Storm Ready County uh, by the National Weather Service obviously does not mean that you are storm proof. Um, <laughs> people uh, who've lived in or near this county for any period of time definitely know that the ravages of nature uh, can cause problems uh, and have high impacts on, on your citizens. Uh, across our nation, we average roughly 10,000 severe thunderstorms, 1,300 tornadoes, and thousands of floods every year. And that's more than any other country in the world. In fact, 90% of all presidential declarations are weather related. So we know that there's nothing that we can do to prevent storms from occurring. However, the mission of our agency and our core partners in emergency management is to reduce the loss of life and property. The Storm Ready program will help us work with emergency managers to create better prepared communities and minimize the impacts of these storms. And that's why I'm here this evening to recognize the efforts of the County Emergency Management Agency and all of its volunteers along with uh, this was really a collaborative effort. It's a cooperation from local fire, law enforcement departments, as well as elected officials. The Champaign County Emergency Management Agency has done an extensive and impressive amount of planning for the various disasters that could impact this county. Uh, that has been done by County EMA Coordinator, uh, Director John Carlson, and the County EMA Deputy Director, John Dwyer, both of whom are here this evening. Uh, the County EMA, uh, the, their administration, as well as their dedicated volunteers are always ready and prepared to relay our hazardous weather information to the public and local government officials and then respond to whatever is needed for the citizens of this county in the wake of a disaster. Now our program, the Storm Ready program, has been in existence for 13 years now. And in its infancy, in September of 2000, the cities of Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy were among the first to de be declared storm ready, not only in the state of Illinois, but in the United States. This was a storm ready designation two years later in Muhammad. 
So I would be very remiss in my recognition this evening uh, if I did not acknowledge the efforts of the former director of the Champaign County EMA, Mr. Bill Keller, and his deputy director, Mr. Greg Abbott, uh, as well as Mr. Gary Crowley, director of the Muhammad ESDA, and Mr. Mark Riefsteck, the deputy director of Muhammad ESDA. They really laid the groundwork for this countywide designation. In order to be declared storm ready, there are six rigorous criteria that have to be met. There needs to be redundant methods of communicating disaster information. There needs to be several methods of receiving hazardous weather or disaster information. Those have to be pre-established. Numerous ways of disseminating that information uh, or disaster recovery information to the public. Uh, there needs to be a formal disaster plan that is written and evaluated. Uh, there must be county preparedness campaigns. And finally, training storm spotters to volunteer their time to report hazardous weather needs to be accomplished. And this has truly been a team effort uh, at all levels of government uh, in emergency response, as well as those in the public and private sector. Uh, the Champaign County Emergency Management Agency not only met these criteria, but they exceeded every single one of these six. Lastly, uh, I'm often asked, what does a designation like this mean to the citizens who live in this county? What it means is that they can have the peace of mind that the communities that they live in and that they work in are prepared to minimize the impact of the hazards before, during, and after an event. But it does not end there. Just like the communities, each family needs to be storm ready by having an action plan for hazardous weather. It's ultimately each individual's responsibility to protect him or herself. And Champaign County EMA and we at the National Weather Service are here to help people achieve that. So, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could have you step forward, please. The Storm Ready program um, only has 19 counties in Illinois that are storm ready. There are 102 counties in the state. So this is a very impressive effort by the county EMA. So I want to congratulate you on Champaign County being declared storm ready by the National Weather Service. Thank you very much. That's, uh, thank you. That's great. Uh, we will display this in a very prominent way. I think we should be very proud of this designation. And thank, well, and, and signs. And signs. <laughs> yeah, there are signs. signs that come with this too. Okay, so, fantastic. And, uh, and um, I want to thank all those who have participated in this program over the years to put us in this position. Yeah. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Oh, Miller. You're very and thank you, John. <laughs> and thank you, John. <laughs> Okay, monthly reports, uh, the Emergency Management Agency for October and November, and the Probation and Court Services for October, and they're all on the department webpage. I think we just ask that they be accepted and filed. I'll make a motion to place them in the department uh, Mr. James? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I apologize. Chair Erickson? And second? Do we have a second for that? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. For other business, uh, David Voorhees from ILPP would like to come and introduce himself and give us a, pro a progress report. Actually, we theoretically haven't started yet, so we, it's mostly a matter of the direction. Thank you for allowing me to spend just a couple of minutes. I, I will be brief because I know you have a lot of business. My name is David Voorhees, a criminal justice consultant, been hired by ILPP, your contractor, to, to look at the, uh, the jail issue in, in many ways. 
My specialty is law enforcement and uh, corrections. Uh, former police chief and chief deputy of a sheriff's department and, and received a contract from the National Institute of Corrections in 1971 to do uh, developed a program called Planning of New Institutions, which your county has taken advantage of. Uh, starting back at that time, we, we took a very strong interest in trying to help improve the jail environment within county agencies. And we, we struck out with some very strong goals of trying to involve the community and the board of, of uh, supervisors or commissioners, whatever you might be called in each different state, Louisiana's police jury. Uh, we think and we have proven over the years that successful projects can't be done by the local experts, those, those people operating the jail, the police departments and the sheriff's departments throughout. It, they really need the support of the community uh, to achieve the right kind of project. And that's one of the beliefs that ILPP carries into this. Uh, I'm not a permanent employee. I, I only come in when there's a special kind of project, and, and this is one of those, where you've got a chance to really make a change to the criminal justice system. Uh, I, I'm often shocked by what counties do across this nation to perpetuate 200 years of the same kind of jails. I'm not talking about prisons, I'm talking about jails, which are, are really uh, just the intake area for prisons and the filtering system for courts. It's a difficult, difficult job those people do at corrections, and I certainly hope, if you haven't, that you will spend considerable time looking at the jail facilities that you have. Uh, I'm also shocked at, at what we do as a society in warehousing people, and I, and I come from, from a police background. You know, when I was a cop, I locked up just as many people as I could, and it's taken me a long time to understand the importance of what we do with a, with a jail. When we lock people up and take their freedoms away, we are committing a very difficult act under the sanction of the county. And so I'm asking you to participate. Don't leave this study to be completed by LPP and, and wait for the response from them because there's a lot of time between now and when that report comes out and I ask for your continued involvement in this project. You've got a great opportunity here to make big changes to your system. It's really apparent that the system, the sheriff and the courts in particular, have made strides in reducing the jail's population but there's a lot of work to be done in that jail, both jails. Uh, I, and I don't speak of just the downtown jail. That satellite jail really needs some help too. So my request to you is to stay involved, be a participant in this planning project. Don't leave it up to those experts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be among about uh, four uh, board members who had a chance to meet with you last night and with Cal, and I felt that you said something very pivotal, pivotal to all of us, and I, I just want to read it. I wrote it out here, and then if you would take a moment to comment on it. And uh, you stated there will always be a risk that someone who has committed a crime will make another bad choice in the future and that it is not necessarily the case that putting somebody in jail is indeed the final solution. And then you went on to say, often incarceration not only fails to ad address, but exacerbates the risk of recidiv I hate that word, recidivism. And would you talk just a little bit more um, about that for those who were not able to come last night and, and 
uh, listen to you and Cal because those seem to be um, uh, very important points you were underlining underlining for there, us. There, there's two issues there. The, the first one is is that oftentimes when a system begins to change, the safest thing is to lock everybody up who commits a crime. How long can we afford to keep people off of the streets? Most, all of them, 80 to 90 percent of the people that go into the county jail come back out. They don't go to the prison system. So only a very small part go. That's the filtering process that the county jail does, which means you really need some good instruments in screening the right people to go on, and you don't have those. Those are not really in place, in my opinion. And so when you start to change the system, you begin to make risk assessments about which people to put into an alternative program or a different sanction, and there will be <coughs> mistakes when you do that. People offend. That's normal. It's action. What's happened in many jurisdictions is when it happens, the prosecutor says the board made us do it, or the judge said the prosecuting attorney made us do it, or the sheriff is too liberal. And in those jurisdictions, things fall apart and the, you retract and you start locking up more and more people because that's the safest solution is to lock up people. The risk is for you to take a gamble on some people into some programs. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying release everybody. I'm just saying be, be very cautious about those that you release. And the second part of it, I got. That, oh, thanks. The point was uh, that uh, the other point that you were making is that the assumption that just because we lock people up, that is the only way. And by doing that, then we increase we That's right. high percentage chance that we increase the problems. Whereas if we were taking some other courses of that, action, that's right. we might well, have a higher success. There, there's rate. an assumption. It, it, it's astounding to me. And I think I've always said it comes from J, James Cagney movies that we all know what jails and prisons are because of those old movies. And, and we accomplish so little. This has been my life. I'm telling you, we accomplish so little in locking people up in terms of changing behavior. In fact, I believe jails and prisons are cultures and graduate school education for criminals. I'm sorry, that's what we do in this country. We educate criminals because we put them all together and they share their techniques. And we make, we can't afford, really, I'm, I'm afraid, we can't afford to do the right treatment to change people's behavior. So that's your real challenge, is what can you do to stop criminal behavior, because we've certainly had it growing, and we've certainly had enough incarceration. And as a former cop, and as somebody really interested in this, I'm saying, let's lock up the people we're afraid of, not the ones we're mad at. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. You know, I think I'm, well, Ralph probably older than I am, <laughs> but we are pretty close. And I concur with some of your statements because I made them right here in this chamber. But look like to me sometimes they take a deaf ear of what you're talking about. And you're right. And when we build the other jail, we were supposed to not build any more jail. We need to educate people to stay out of jail. And that's to go back like you and I was raised, with respect. We lost respect in this country. We did. And we need to go back to that. I was raised when the police didn't have a car. They walked the beat. And uh, we were playing football and 
They were other things out in the street. They come down and started playing with them. We knew them. We never had to run hide from the police because we had respect for each other. And we need to let the parents have the same opportunity that parents of yours and mine had back in the days, and we have raised good people. That's what's wrong. And I've been saying that in this day. But it seems that don't nobody want to listen at you. It's, it's a difficult argument. Well, it's not difficult. If you set the Lord back like it was when you and I respect your mama and daddy, or you get your butt whooped spanked. <laughs> and I don't have no scars on me from that. So that's been a big problem. Everybody, oh, if you spank, use a crumble because you spank that. It's rather spank him than let him end up in the system you're talking about. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Send the father to prison for spanking. That's right. <laughs> But that's, that's, that's not right, yeah. and we know that. But we, we got a thing here where we raise more money on the criminal system. That is a big mock commodity for money in this country, and it needs to stop. We need to go back and let the parents have the say to raise their children, sell them to school, and have respect for each other so when you go down the street, you don't jump on your neighbor you respect your neighbor. And that's what we lost in this country. We don't have that anymore. Yeah. You go down the street, you get mugged anymore, and that's ridiculous. Thank you. Uh, uh, let, let me add one other comment, because I've been so adamant at, at some of the things I've said. You need to invest in your jails. I'm not saying don't build. I'm just saying build right, plan participate. That's what I'm asking. Thank you, folks. Good night. Thank you. And the next item is the Community Justice Task Force ended December 1st, and so it has to be reconstituted. Uh, so would somebody move that it be reconstituted? <clears throat> so move. Question. Yeah. Is uh, the suspension task force also been no. dissolved? Oh, I don't know. I mean, if there's no need we for one, much there should not be a need for another. <laughs> there's never really a task force. The, the, the group that was defined as working on the jail project is staff, and they'll continue working on it if and when the county board makes decisions about moving forward. But the community, ju community justice task force is made up primarily of citizens. And is there going to be a final report uh, presented to the board once that group does their findings and recommendations as well? They presented a report in November. Mr. Richards uh, was the chair and presented it. I believe the intent is that they will continue working with ILPP as ILPP works on their report as well. Okay. Thank you. A motion by Patsy and a second by Ralph. Okay, all in favor say aye. Sorry. Yeah. I had a question. Um, I don't think there's a need to change the motion, but I made this comment during the uh, presentation from uh, uh, with Mr. Richards and the folks from the task force at the last uh, regular board meeting, uh, and I just want to make sure that this point doesn't get lost as we're looking at reconstituting the commission. I think that the charter of the community justice task force the first time around was excessively narrow. And uh, I mean, Mr. Carter said something that I think is, is exactly the way we need to put this about educating people to stay out of jail. And I think it gets to the point that the, uh, the education system, educational opportunities and opportunities for youth in the community are extremely important in helping kids get on the right road and not end up in the justice system. So I would personally like to see the charter of the uh, task force uh, structured such that it allows the task force, if they are so inclined, to look at uh, youth services and, and juvenile detention issues as well and see if that uh, ways in which that factors into the need for adult detention. Yes? Can you follow on that? Yeah. Uh, I would also, if you're going to reestablish this, uh, if there's going to be any open 
positions on that board that we strongly look at some uh, outside areas in the rural areas of people that may want to serve to bring that to the table also and I agree with what Alex said about uh, mm -hmm. opening up a little broader because I was strongly in hopes that they were going to come back with some recommendations on some programs mm -hmm. not what the issues were from what I heard at the last report but mm -hmm. more of here are some things that we could probably look at and fine-tune or incorporate mm -hmm. so when that charter is established, uh, as Alex said, we need to really look at that. Mm -hmm. And then again, if there's going to be any more appointments or some seats that are being vacated, that whoever appoints those uh, looks at it object, uh, object, uh, object, uh, object. I can't even say that word, Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and does that because you know it's it's a county task force and and it wasn't really represented with some rural interest. So thank you, Ms. Maxa. Thank you. Um, I would like to suggest, though, that the uh, committee, as it's reconstituted, basically take off uh, from where the other one left off, rather than going back and re going across the same ground. So if we could do that, that I think that would be helpful, too. Uh, then can we arrange it so that uh, we would be presented with an amended resolution that will take into consideration the comments so far with a, um, a sunset date of whatever we um, can agree on here at the board. Maybe we need to, the, uh, may I ask a clarification of Ms. Busey? Um, I forgot, it's 25 weeks on the ILPP contract. Is that till April or June or I'm sorry, what date? Okay, let me, I'll rephrase it. So that the sunset date uh, coincide, uh, uh, extends one month beyond the final date of the contract with ILPP and that would give the task force and just a, a little bit of cushion time to, to finish up whatever report they're working on. Thank you. Mr. Kibley? Is that a motion? So moved. No. <laughs> uh, but I do have a question. Uh, so the, from what I'm hearing now and from the original motion, it sounds like we were going to reconstitute the group under the guise of the original uh, charter. But it sounds like the group here wants to see an amended charter before it's agreed upon. So is that, uh, I would then therefore... Uh, Can we have that available at the board meeting? That's the great question. Uh, who's going to be the one deriving it? I assume it would be you. So, yeah, yeah Kim, if we present an amended one to take into account the things you want yes, and present it at the board meeting. So, yeah, I, then at that yeah. point, I, I move that we uh, postpone or uh, table this until the full county board meeting to give you time to uh, reevaluate. Fine. Second. All in favor? Uh, okay, oh, discussion? I yeah. That yeah, okay. Uh, I would suggest that we uh, pass this to the full county board without recommendation to allow time for that to be created, not necessarily table it. Okay. Chris? I can disagree, Matt. Sorry, I'm still figuring out the buttons. I, I disagree. I mean, I think it's certainly legitimate for this committee to send to the county board the recommendation that we reconstitute the task force, and between now and then, uh, you and others can work to flesh out this, res this into a resolution that could be presented at the full board meeting. But I think we, I mean, I don't see any substantial disagreement to the idea of going ahead. So let's get on record that says we go ahead, we want to reconstitute the task force and work out the details when you bring it to the full board. My only um, question, and I'm, and I'm looking to Mr. Richards to maybe help me remember, um, my memory of this task force is that it was created at the Justice Committee level and never went to the county board. There was no resolution to the county board. It was created at the Justice Committee level. It was appointed by the Justice Committee chair. So certainly if you want to delay the decision so that we can put together an appropriate scope of work for the task force, I assume that you could do that under justice at the county board meeting, but I don't think it would be a county board resolution, nor is it an action that requires a full county board. It sits here. Is that right, Michael? Well, the justice chair appointed the people, and right. for the record, 
there were two people from the unincorporated area who applied. One, Julian Rappaport, who has been the president of the County Board of Health, was put on there. Uh, so we, we had a, a document constituting it from the County Board and then the appointments were from the Justice Chair. So if we did that, I assume that we would need to have some sort of update for that or reapprove it and then ask, Astrid would make the appointments if yeah. we did the same thing. The, the document, I believe, was a press release which defined the scope of work, which is what we then published and used as a basis. So if we could have that press release at the county board meeting defining what it is you're looking for this time, that would probably address it. Do you think that's how mm -hmm. I remember it occurred? I, I think so. We, yeah. we had made it clear all along to the task force to, if there was something else they thought would be of value to the board that wasn't in the document to bring it anyway. So. Okay, that does. We need, to vote. we need to vote whether or not it actually pushes full board. Yeah. Okay, uh, all in favor? Point, point of order, yes. we are voting on Patsy's tabling of the, of the motion to the full board. That's what's on the floor. Okay, uh, well, was that seconded? Yes, it was. It was. Well, it was mine and I think Patsy seconded it, uh, but it was to, to push this to the full board. In a week and a half. Yeah, but are, are we tabling it or are we uh, pass, uh, passing it on without uh, without recommendation? What are we doing? Aren't those different? Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Kibler's I mean, motion have, was to defer it to the county board meeting, and that's and what we would be doing. With, I mean, yeah. So that's the, yeah. Defer to county board, uh, and <coughs> we'll vote on it then. Okay. And that's been seconded. If there's some question as to what we did, we can always ask the clerk. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay. That will do it. Thank you. Thanks, Astrid. I predict this is the first chair we'll have to replace. <laughs> All right. Good evening for policy tonight. Let me get my technology up to speed here. Uh, the first thing on our agenda is the recognition of the, uh, for information only, uh, the resignation of, I believe, Beverly Hanks from the Big Slough drainage district. Um, the first, I, I'd like to entertain, for the next items, I'd like to entertain a omnibus motion for the, for two, three, four, and five uh, for nominations for these other drainage districts. Oh. Diane Michaels second. and Mr. J, a second. All right, uh, Mr. Chair, what are your nominations? Uh, for the uh, number two, lower big slope uh, drainage so, district, Myron Isaac. I'm sorry, thank you. We do forget that. Uh, for the lower Big Sloth uh, Drainage District, Mr. Uh, Myron Isaac, Two Mile Sloth District, Doug Steerwalt, Silver Creek District, Mr. Mosier, Steve Mosier, and Kankakee District, Ed Feeney. All right, is there any discussion? Patsy. Uh, um, mine is not a discussion, it's an information question. Um, is there anything in the state statutes about an individual serving on more than one drainage district? I'm, I'm not aware. <clears throat> does, any, does anybody know, know the details? Uh, Mr. Trader. There is nothing, uh, Ms. Petrie, that can absolve an individual from serving on more than one drainage district. I checked into it once. Did you? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor aye. signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign? Can you pass unanimously. Okay, the next nomination is uh, 
for the Mental Health Board. Any motion? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, this was difficult. Uh, these three uh, represent just uh, an amazing resume of uh, mental health and mental health uh, experience. That All of their resumes were extraordinary. Uh, I was sorry I couldn't pick all three. Um, I picked two, and I, um, I asked a third to reapply when there was another opening because I feel that uh, she would have uh, an opportunity again. So I chose uh, Deborah Townsend, PhD, and Julian Rappaport uh, for the Mental Health Board. Is there a second? Second. Ralph Langenheim. All right, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Aye. I'm gonna call for a division. Those in favor, please raise your hands. Eleven. Okay. Those not in favor, raise your hand. Okay, motion passes. Will not be on consent. Okay, um, Mr. Chair, your nomination for the CU Mass Transit District Board. Uh, Donald Erkman. Seconded by Mr. Jay. Any discussion? All those signify by saying uh, uh, Patsy. Um, it isn't a discussion about his application. It's a compliment uh, for his application. And um, this has been uh, mentioned by various members of uh, this board and previous boards as to the quality and quantity of applicants. Some of the onus is on us as a county board to redesign our application uh, for boards. But in addition, I have heard fellow board members on many occasions um, suggest we vote no on an application when there is a dearth of information and that is a continuing pattern. So I hope we can take this opportunity of looking at Mr. Uckman's and then remember to put that in our tickler file of things that we might get done as we move along on board business. Mr. Kibler. Uh, I do plan on voting for the applicant. I guess my only recommendation is for future uh, CU Mass Transit boards because of the Southwest Mass Transit District's potential dissolve. Uh, any future appointments, we strongly consider uh, those from Southwest Champaign to ensure representation. Uh, thank you. Um, Mr. Kurtz, could you explain uh, whether this was a, a regional choice or, or not? It's the only choice I have. Um, it was my understanding that, that there, there's been an attempt over the past to balance Champaign and Urbana, and this position was historically an Urbana position. It wasn't, a, I, I don't think that's formal, but that's what has been tried to be done before. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay. For the Local Foods Policy Council. Uh, there is a, was it, do you have the typo on there? It's, uh, I have uh, 531 2014. Is that what it is? I have the fifth month, doesn't matter. Uh, Stephen Harriet is my okay. choice. Second by Ralph. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay, finally, the, co the Community Action Board, number nine. Uh, Zoe Hood is my choice. Second. Mr. James has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right. 
Moving next to uh, section B, county clerk. We have two reports from the county clerk tonight. Mr. Esri has moved, seconded by Mr. Mitchell. Any discussion or questions about the reports? Any comments from the clerk on the reports? All right, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Okay. And uh, item three under county clerk, uh, plan for 2013 polling places. Uh, Gordy, could you come over and tell us a little bit about this? Thank you. As you know, um, polling places, the assignment of places of election according to statute are the responsibility of the county board. For some time that has been a collaborative effort between my office and the board. Um, it is an incredible amount of work to locate polling places, do the legwork, stay in communication with them, make sure they're compliant in all the things that we ask them to do. Um, and so we make an awful lot of the arrangements for polling places and generally bring a plan for polling places to the board and the board gives us feedback as to whether or not you think it's acceptable. For 2013, I am proposing a change to the sort of normal polling place setup that we have for Champaign County and I'm asking that the precincts that are in closest proximity to the University of Illinois campus be consolidated into one central voting location located in the Illini Union for both the February and April elections in 2013. I do that for a couple of reasons. Um, the first is that because of significantly lower anticipated turnout for these elections, a centralized, highly visible, well-trafficked polling place is actually a greater convenience to the voters in those, in those precincts. Um, because of the publicity from early voting, because these are normally relatively infrequent voters locating, this, locating their election day polling place in the same building where we do early voting allows us to do a much more um, simple voter education process for the voters in those precincts. We can simply work with the university, for example, and send one email to every graduate and undergraduate student at the University of Illinois and tell them if they live between the railroad tracks and Lincoln Avenue and between University Avenue and Windsor, for early voting and for election day, they should just go to the union. So it's, it's a much more convenient option for them. The second reason, and it is a secondary consideration, but it's still important, is that this will represent across the two elections a savings to the county of about eight to $10,000 um, because of fewer judges being needed, less equipment, easier distribution, less polling place rent, those sorts of things. So with that in mind, I'm available to take questions. I would, would, I'd like to entertain a motion um, to, thanks Mr. Esri. Second by Mr. Mitchell. Now, discussion. Astrid. I'm concerned about Skelton Place. I think it represents a hardship for them. And you know, perhaps they could be given uh, a little education and all vote absentee or something. But I really think a lot of them would find it very hard to get to the union to vote. Well, we can certainly. Uh, Skelton Place is the normal polling place for City of Champaign 7. Um, and of course the residents in Skelton Place vote in Skelton Place as residents of that precinct. And I understand that this, um, I understand your concern. The, my experience in that precinct is that the vast majority of voters in that precinct are affiliated with the University of Illinois. And so the union for them, um, to me, is a much more convenient voting location. And if it were my preference, the union would be the election day polling place for all of these precincts for every election. The reason that we can't do that is for an election like we just had in November, we'll have six or 8,000 people vote in these 10 precincts combined and that's just too many people for one location so we spread it out across 10 locations or nine locations. But why couldn't the people in Skelton Place, you know, just have automatically uh, mail ballots sent out to them and somebody there explain to them uh, but ma okay. Automatically mailing them ballots would be against the law. We can certainly send them a letter encouraging them to ask for okay. a mailed ballot. Someone there, it just seems to me they need some sort of consideration in this. Perhaps their administration could tell them all that they 
should order uh, absentee ballots. That's that's good feedback. That's an excellent idea, and we will work with the administration of the building to encourage those folks to vote early or vote absentee. All right, Patsy, I had next. Uh, uh, Ms. Bergson did cover, did cover some of my concerns, but I'd uh, like to add one more possibility for you, you to consider, unless it is against the law, and that is to offer a means of transportation for them to the union and, and back at a certain set set time. Um, we will work with the with the administrators of the building on something like that. We, of course, at the county don't have the option. We don't have a vehicle. And it's still a hell of a go. All right, Sorry. next I have Michael. <laughs> Election day polling places, uh, the setting of is the prerogative of the county board. If board members want Skelton Place to be a polling place, we can amend this plan and put it in here. Uh, if not, and the clerk makes good points about clearing things up, we don't have to. But if we want to, all we have to do is change it because we decide where polling places are. All right, Ralph. I've worked as an election judge for many years. For a, for a few. Yes. And I'm seriously concerned with the campus community. And I wish to congratulate you on coming to the conclusion that the campus precinct should be merged. Students don't always vote, but sometimes they vote in large numbers and they've been responsible for several rather shocking turns of events in, in elections in this county. So I, I think they should be encouraged to vote. On the other hand, being a <coughs> somewhat aged myself, I have great sympathy for the people in Skelton Place and the elderly vote above average. They're, they're, they're concerned with it. They're wanting, wanted to still be in the game. And I think that it would be a good idea to make some sort of an arrangement so that the folks in Skelton Place don't have to make a pilgrimage to the student union and land on foreign shores, so to speak, to vote. Thank you. We will work with the, with the folks that run Skelton Place and encourage those folks to vote by mail. If you look at the turnout numbers that I included in the memo, you'll see for a typical consolidated primary or consolidated general election that CC7 generates between 20 and 25 votes. If we were to run Skelton Place as its own polling place for the April election, I see no reason to anticipate greater turnout than that. And it would, you know, it would be a significant expense and it would significantly inconvenience all of the other voters in CC7 who are affiliated with the university who don't live in Skelton Place because they're going to see the same barrage of publicity about go to the union to vote, go to the union to vote. And if we segregate out just those folks in CC7 out of consideration for the people in one building, we're sort of cutting off our nose to spite our face. So I would, my request is that we, that we include CC7 in this consolidation and allow me to to creatively work with the folks who run Skelton Place and encourage those folks to vote by mail. I, I, I truly believe we're talking about 20 or 25 voters in that building for a typical municipal election. Mr. Alex. Um, I came in here with an open mind. I was kind of concerned about the accessibility issue with Skelton Place as well, but I think Mr. Halton's argument is persuasive that the majority of residents in that neighborhood are students and the I think the benefit to the voting process of being able to send a clear message as to where your polling place is, is probably going to result in less confusion than it would result in inconvenience for people at Skelton Place. I would point out there is the option of voting by mail, there is the option of early voting, and uh, Skelton Place is on a bus line which connects directly with the bus stop in front of the Illini Union. So I, I, I guess I don't feel like it's an inordinate inconvenience, and given the the relatively small number of residents who vote compared to the number of students who vote, I'd be inclined to support this proposal. All right, are we, are we ready to vote? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Halton. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Okay, County Administrator's Report. Deb, do you have any comments? Not really. Any, can somebody give me a motion to accept and place on file? Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Hartke seconded. Any discussion or questions for the, Patsy? Um, I, I know there is sensitivity uh, concerning the um, racial statistics in relationship to uh, uh, people working for the county, but I do encourage us to 
continue and uh, our efforts to um, have more diversity in our employees. Um, um, these statistics were most helpful to see. And then the second uh, is if it is not too inconvenient to add under work workman's compensation report, uh, just to save us digging back in, um, you know, with previous months, to have a couple columns so we could see how that compares sort of month to month or say November of 2011 to November of 2012. Is that a possibility? Would you like to see it? Would you like to see a six month history? Would you like to see year to year? Do you want to see 12 month? What, what would you like to see? <laughs> year to, just a, a 12 November month. 2011 to yeah. November 2012? Yeah. Perfect. And not all the months in between, but just those two months. Yeah, it, it gives us a sense of what, you know, might be happening in relationship to cost to the county. Okay. Thank you very much. Other questions, Mr. Kibler? Hi, just a quick question. Regarding the report that's given in the fiscal year 2012 general corporate fund projection summary report and just the auditor's report, I know we're a little bit jumping the gun, but there's a little bit of a difference just in terms of totally revenue. Finance agenda. You're on the finance agenda. This is policy. Oh, I thought you were looking at the wrong hand. Sorry. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of accepting and putting this on file, say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Okay, and um, item D, um, you've received information on an invitation for us to join another Mohammed Aquifer coalition. Uh, this one I believe is to designate it as a sole source aquifer. Um, Deb, do you wanna make some comments on this? Um, we do have for you at your desks tonight the actual intergovernmental agreement which supplements what was in your packet together with um, an agreement for Champaign County to join in that intergovernmental agreement and the last page an assessment of the cost share table if Champaign County does join. Um, <clears throat> this is not a project I've been working on, but Angela Adams is here from the city of Champaign. If you have questions, um, she, you, she could try to answer them for you. Effectively, this is um, an approach towards designating the Muhammad Aquifer as a sole source aquifer for a variety of reasons. I, I believe this um, initiative emanates from the Clinton landfill legal challenge that we're also involved in at this point in time. The bottom line is if the county board does decide to do this from a financial perspective, the financial commitment based on um, everything that you're being presented with here today would be right in the $14,000 range, which is similar to the financial commitment you made to the legal challenge. So it would be in addition to that financial commitment. <clears throat> All right. Um, do we need to have a, a motion before we even start discussion on this? Yeah. Okay, Mr. Alex. Um, I move that we forward this to the full board without recommendation in light of the fact that yeah. we've just received this. Second. Mr. Langenheim has seconded. All right, let's have discussion. Patsy. Uh, thank you. Uh, I have the same concern uh, with this that I had in relationship to the communities and counties that have come on board uh, in relationship to the, the suit. And um, what is your uh, sense of other communities and counties? I mean, it's 17 counties, lots of communities. And um, so this is basically the population bullet of, of the area over the aquifer. It still seems to me that um, we're carrying the water for a lot of other entities and what uh, efforts are being made to bring more and more people on board. Okay, um, the city of Champaign is the lead agency, so we're kind of doing all the outreach and education is why I'm coordinating. So we've sent letters, um, there's 14 counties over the aquifer that have all received letters to their, to their board. You guys received one as well. Um, we sent letters to all, um, about 88 communities 
um, that are over the aquifer that have some sort of elected official. So they received a letter as well about sole source. We were offering um, a presentation from the consulting firm that we're paying for the option to join financially to pass a resolution. It had a copy of um, the phase one report from the consulting firm so that they understood why we felt that we qualified and what did this mean to the region. You are completely correct that this designation uh, covers the entire aquifer region. So we're not only working with elected officials and boards, um, but we've sent letters to the Farm Bureaus, the 14 County Farm Bureaus. Um, we just met with Pyatt County on Friday and had a very positive response. Um, we've sent letters to about 100 organizations all over the entire state, um, agriculture organizations, environmental organizations, moms groups, those types of things that would have an interest in this environmental health um, so that they understand this as well. Um, it's very important to the US EPA for them to see the public outreach. So this isn't just let's blanket the whole region and put um, a requirement on everyone. They want positive public support is essential to even getting this designation. Um, so the city of Champaign has shifted from when we first originally started looking at this to public outreach needs to be our number one um, priority in this. So we are going to send all those letters again after the first of the year, asking them to join the coalition, just like we are for you, um, or to pass a resolution of support. Um, we're also going to invite US EPA to Champaign to have um, kind of a, a meeting. Uh, it's not going to necessarily be a public meeting, because they will host those later on in the next six months. Um, but for people to get answers or get their questions answered directly from the source of US EPA. So we're doing anything and everything that we really can think to do in the entire region. And those cities on there are not just in Champaign, Urbana, and Norma. There are a few that are you know, placed all over the region. Um, well, we have a matrix of cost here. And if this is going to the full board as proposed by Mr. Alex, um, I need to better understand what will happen to the costs that uh, we as county members uh, will be paying toward this, which is roughly $14,000 should other entities come on board. So what type of elasticity are you building in so that when it comes to a vote, we know better how to handle our vote? So the way it works is we have a not to exceed cost, I think of $65,000 on there that covers those consulting fees. Um, it's not to exceed, so that hasn't changed. The original five entities covered their part and they're receiving reimbursement now. So say you decide to join and then we get five of the other counties on board that would chip in. We're presenting this to DeWitt after the first of the year. Um, so you would also get a refund, a refund so to say. Um, so your costs would continually go down as we have more members join. Okay, next next I have Astrid. Uh, what will this do for us? Microphone, please. What will this do for us that our lawsuit won't, as far as Clinton? These are two totally different coalitions, programs, whatever you want to call them. The lawsuit is focusing on that Clinton didn't follow the proper procedure, the Clinton landfill. This is focusing on a greater public outreach of this community kind of has pride in our water. You know, our water's a thousand years old. It's a very positive US EPA. This region really, really cares about this aquifer. This ties into Clinton in a couple different ways, and it's very confusing and nothing's guaranteed. So there's a section in the Illinois law that says if you have a sole source aquifer, a landfill has to meet certain requirements. If, if our lawsuit is to win and requires Clinton to go back to DeWitt County and we get the sole source designation while that's happening, the aquifer would not meet, and according to the Illinois Geological Survey, would not meet those requirements set by Illinois state law. So technically, they wouldn't be able to place the chemical waste landfill over the aquifer. But if, if Clinton was to get their answer from US EPA in February that says, yes, you can do this, and then we get sole source aquifer, we, it's grandfathered in. 
The sole source aquifer is not to fix a problem. It's basically to just educate the community. If we would have done this five years ago, we wouldn't be in this situation. So this aquifer designation could help us in the long run for nobody else could put a landfill like Clinton over it. Um, this is a starting point for local communities to do other type of wellhead protection areas. Um, it's just a basic public education because you know the public would be outraged if they learned this was their only source of water in this region. They wouldn't let contamination happen to the aquifer. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, Mr. Langenheim's next, and then I have Jim. I'd just like to remind the board that this county is the, probably the heaviest user of Mahama aquifer water in the county, in, in the area. Uh, the area over by the river where the aquifers at the surface uh, does use more, but they have much more recharge. We have low recharge, high usage, and the biggest cone of depression by all odds. And I think it behooves us to do everything we possibly can to control and limit drawdown on that aquifer. The other thing to point out in this, just so that you kind of understand what the designation means, is that Sole source aquifer designation means that any project that's receiving federal money will get reviewed if it shows the potential to contaminate the aquifer. So we basically wouldn't be spending our tax dollars on some sort of project that could contaminate the water for you know 750,000 people. It's an easy review process. It takes between a week or two weeks. It goes to US EPA in Chicago. Um, they haven't had very many projects they haven't had they've had one project denied and they've only had a few projects modified meaning they've worked with the engineer or the consultant on that firm they fixed the pro project they went right back to where they what they were building it's only project based it's not farm subsidies um, it's not chemical applications that farmers use that they may get federal money the farm bill none of that stuff is covered in that review process All right, mr. McGuire thank you thanks for the questions too about the cost and the issue of the aquifer, I think it's very important to all of us, um, as we've discussed. And my questions go to, um, you, you talked about the EPA and its regulation, and I don't know of any federal government regulation that isn't more cumbersome than a lot of the, the ones even the county um, implements. And I wondered what um, regulation that this might put on our local farmers if we become a sole source. Uh, when we met with Piatt County Farm Bureau on Friday, we really couldn't identify any problems that they would have in this designation. It's all the kind of the uneasiness with the US EPA that, you know, they have troubles working with them on other projects, so this is automatically going to be very burdensome. The US EPA in Chicago, Region 5, has made this process very simple. A review, a review takes longer than two, no longer than two weeks. Also, most projects that get federal money already have applied for or have done an environmental impact statement. So when you do any large project with federal money, they usually require that. So when they do that, that's enough to fill the need for Region 5. The agencies within the federal government, when you get a sole source aquifer, they sign a memorandum of understanding. So if USDA is to give a loan to a farmer, they're going to work with US EPA, US EPA to make sure that when there everything's being reviewed at one time, so um, you know a, a farmer isn't going through a major headache of getting their plans reviewed, USD, USD, USDA is going to do that all behind the scenes for the applicant. Does that make sense? Kind of. So we can't guarantee anything what the review process is going to look like. But if you're not posing any, if you're not posing a threat to contaminate the aquifer, your project's going to go right through US EPA, no big deal. We're dealing with the EPA right now on this issue, and I don't, I don't know the complete history of it, but I think it's been months, if not years, I mean, that the Clinton issue has been going on. So, I'm, I mean, to say weeks, I think, it's good, I mean, I just think it's the, the Bureau of Land is the one monitoring Clinton Landfill. This is under the groundwater section. So there are two very different sections that are working on the landfill versus working on sole source aquifer. There's only eight sole source aquifers in Region 5. There's um, one full-time staffer that we met with that reviews all the projects. Since 1992, um, that's the last time an aquifer was applied. Like I said, he's only had one project 
project um, that was denied and 13 projects that moved on. Those 13 projects can always say, we don't want to use federal money any longer. So just because your project is denied from USC, not denied, but say there needs to be changes, there's the potential for like through stormwater runoff to contaminate the aquifer. That person can always say, well, I'm just not going to use the federal money. I'm going to continue on with my project. US EPA just does not want to use people's taxes and, their, and the federal money to do something that could potentially contaminate the aquifer. So, so I don't think personally that there's a huge risk if they always have that option. That makes sense. All right, Mr. James. Uh, we're hearing about the farmers and that, but what about like uh, there was an ethanol plant that was going to be coming into Champaign County. How would that affect a process like that? It doesn't have anything to do with quantity. So people can still continue to use an unlimited amount of water like you would use in an ethanol plant or the coal plant or anything. It all has to do with quantity. So when the ethanol plant is being built, if it's being built over the aquifer, so it has to be over the aquifer is the number one thing. Um, they would submit their plans. They would also have to have federal money. So if an ethanol plant is not getting federal money, this does not go to US EPA. If they are getting federal money, when they f do their environmental impact statement, that's probably, that's gonna go to US EPA for review. And they're just gonna need to make sure that nothing um, has the potential to contaminate the aquifer. Well, here in the conversation, and by no means am I grasping at all, but. The EPA has got their hand in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And from what I'm hearing, like with Clinton and everything else, so designating this as a sole source might be fine and dandy on a piece of paper, but the EPA is already looking at all those issues as, as they come up. So I don't see why we want to spend money just to get that title when they're already doing the job they're supposed to be doing. You sort of follow what I'm saying? No. I mean, well, I look at it, if they're going in like on the Clinton landfill, and that is their jurisdiction and their uh, laws that either make it operate or not operate, then why are we going in and saying, well, we want to have this designated, and as, if I heard you right, if it doesn't come about until after they grant a permit, possibly, it's grandfathered in. Okay. But um, I, I'm just sort of confused. I, I, I feel like yeah. everybody wants to have a title or, or uh, something put to something, but the bottom line with me is, are we fighting the right battles? Because the US EPA is here, supposedly, to protect the citizens. Correct. OK, so a couple of things there that I'm going to touch on. Um, first, this Clinton landfill started in the hands of DeWitt County. It did not start with Illinois EPA or US EPA. DeWitt County signed off on it and said this was fine. Illinois EPA has to look at the facts presented to them. Does the aquifer have the layers of clay that are going to not allow the PCBs to get into it? They have nothing to do with the, you know, the public outcry. The, they have to just look at the facts that are presented from Shaw Environmental from the DeWitt County Board. So that's that part of it. Illinois EPA did not have their hands technically in that. They did move on the petition from Illinois EPA to US EPA, but that's because they had to look at the facts presented to them because they trusted DeWitt County with that decision. The next part of it, the fact that this is a little confusing, and I had mentioned this to Deb, is we do have the consultant that we've hired. He can obviously come in and give a much better presentation than I'm giving you. He's worked for the Geological Survey for the U of I for 35 years. Um, that's something else you can consider if you want to learn more about what the designation means. What I can touch on when you talked about the designation is this isn't just a piece of paper from US EPA saying we have a sole source drinking water. We've spent $65,000 from a consulting firm to come in and look and say that this region gets 99% of our water from this aquifer. We can't get it from anywhere else. If the aquifer was to become, become contaminated, this would be kind of like a desert. There's nowhere else to get it. That's going to mean, I guess, in my opinion, in the p opinion of this coalition, that's going to mean a lot for these 750,000 people living in this region, for them to learn, I'm over a sole source aquifer. I don't want a business like Clinton ever coming in here and potentially contaminating the aquifer because I can't just get it from a river or a lake like Danville or Lake Bloomington. So it's a educational starting point for this region to understand the importance of our aquifer. Um, it also has that section in the Illinois law that says landfills have to read a, reach or meet a stricter requirement to be over a sole source aquifer. 
So if we have the designation, we're not gonna be looking at another Clinton in five, 10, 15, 20 years. That's not a possibility with the Illinois law with the Muhammad Aquifer characteristics. Does that cover everything? It's, it's a good opinion, and I'll take it to heart. Right. So, that's just, you know, and the coalition understands the concerns and the fears and all of those things, but we're kind of like, what do we have to lose? Yes, it's $65,000. We're all sharing it amongst ourselves. But is it worth the two weeks of the extra review from US EPA um, to not have the contamination in the aquifer? And this coalition believes that they'd rather have the two-week review than to have the contamination. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I really have a really tough problem with this because you don't have to be very smart to know that you wouldn't put a landfill uh, over the top of an aquifer the size of this one. It makes absolutely no sense. And for those of us that live in the country, do not trust EPA period. They, once they get their foot in the door, it's wide open and they come with both guns blaring. So we have some real concerns. If EPA is all this great, why hasn't we stopped it already? Common sense would tell you, do not put a landfill over an aquifer. There are other places that we can put this landfill. Now it's not convenient, but there are other places to do it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, as you know, uh, for a long time now, I've been a, the, one of the first to voice my opinion about this sole source water aquifer and the Muhammad aquifer. Um, I've traveled to Springfield, <coughs> talked with Senator Durbin concerning this, uh, got him on board as, as well as Senator Kirk, uh, went to uh, committee meetings of the uh, state legislature, uh, I feel it's an obligation of ours to the future of our water survival in this community and in all the communities here that we vote in any way to support the opportunity to keep that landfill from putting PCBs above it. Um, without a doubt in my mind, this $14,000 is a drop in the bucket as to what might take place if we contaminate or if, that, or if Clinton landfill contaminates our water system, $14,000 will look in our hindsight as a, a, a pittance to what we would have had to, what we will have to do if, God forbid, anything happens to that water system. So I'm in full favor of joining this consortium as well. Thank you. One other thing to point out following your comment, um, Senator Durbin and Senator Kirk have um, after probably your discussion, have written US EPA and urged them to not make a decision on the PCB landfill until we find out if this is a, in fact a sole source aquifer. So when I was at Region 5 at the beginning of November, like I told you, the Bureau of Land and the Bureau of Groundwater are talking to each other and Bureau of Land wants to know if our application's in. Um, so those two divisions are talking, they're involved in each other, and that's another positive thing to sole source is that Senator Durbin and Kirk are asking US EPA to give us this time to have this designation before Clinton's permitted. All right, next I have Mr. Kibler. Thank you for coming. So beyond just landfills, what other things does it uh, necessarily impact in terms of other business entities that may want to come on board? Is it just landfills or is it, no. it's also in addition to anybody that gets federal funds, but and what else? Any project, all, the only requirement is from the US EPA is federal funding. The Illinois law has a requirement about landfills over sole source aquifers. Landfills specifically. Landfills specifically over sole source aquifers have to meet a certain geological criteria of 50 feet of stratum, they don't believe our, our aquifer would meet that criteria. The biggest part of it, though, is the federal funding. Because our lawsuit has to win, and we have to go back to DeWitt County for that section of Illinois law to, 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 um, to happen. The bigger picture of it is the federal funding. So road projects, HUD projects, um, any type of projects that you could, the county, you guys could be looking at, could receive federal review. 
most likely you're going to already be filing an environmental impact statement when you do road projects or when you do stormwater projects or drainage projects or sewer sanitary facilities that's going to already meet the criteria of US EPA. And I don't think most people want to do anything to contaminate the aquifer. So if US EPA comes back and says your stormwater has too much runoff going into the aquifer, let's modify that. You guys are going to say, okay, let's modify it because we don't want to contaminate the aquifer. Does that, make, does that answer your question, types of projects? Uh, in terms of projects, it does. So um, you know what, I'll defer for a moment. Next, I have Mr. Maxwell. Uh, thank you. Um, nobody wants to contaminate the aquifer. I, I totally agree with that. I am a little concerned from the viewpoint of the farming community, and I hope over time, possibly before now, uh, between now and the board meeting, that the farming community will at least give us some uh, ideas, or at least their concerns, if there are any, about the possible uh, unintended consequences the uh, sole designation could have upon the farming community. Thank you. Uh, Steve Carter, um, the city manager in Champaign, did meet with Brad Yukin, I believe, from uh, Champaign County. Brad didn't see any concerns um, raised through this. Uh, he knew that he also had six months, at least six months, to really look into this. But his first glance was there was no concerns. And like I told you, Pyatt County Farm Bureau um, is looking at a, a resolution, possibly a resolution of support next week, at their, or two weeks from their board meeting. All right, Mr. Hartke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so if I understand you correctly, for the many of us in this room who think that Clinton uh, landfill is a bad idea, this is effectively another tool in the box to fight the battle against it, especially if our designation comes before the land determination on Clinton, correct? Correct. Okay. But it's all a big maybe. There's no right. guarantee that right. it can. This is not used to solve a problem. It's, right. an, it's just an aid in this situation. Right. That's why I say it's a tool in the box. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, and also concerning the 14 grand, um, this board would see a review document of what the budget, what that $65,000 total is, is spent on so we can, you know, make sure it's not for parties that it's for this, you know, and not that I believe that would happen, but it, we would get a going, review. Potential. It's all going to the, I can tell you now, it's all going to the consulting firm, okay. um, which, which applied phase one, which is on the city's website, to make sure that we qualify. Phase two is the actual application, and then phase three is any questions they have, and then you pay a 10% administrative fee to Champagne for, like I said, the letters, different things like that. Doing, doing the work. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Ms. Michaels. I thought I heard you say that the state of Illinois already has rules in place about putting, um, you know, uh, places like Clinton, the landfill, over aquifers. So that law is kind of already in place. You and then my other question is this real quick. Um, I kind of read this as two different parts. One is, um, please support it financially, but if you're not going to support it financially, could you at least support it in letter? What would happen if we didn't support it financially and just supported it in, in you know, in a, in a letter? Okay. The first part to your question, um, there is a section in Illinois law, but you have to be a designated sole source aquifer. So this is not designated from US EPA. Yes, our consultant says it, it's a sole source aquifer, but it's not designated that. So we need this designation for that part of the Illinois law to kick in. Um, second part of your question is if, so when, when we submit our application to US EPA, you're, you know, you're on the, the cover letter saying that this county supports this, um, the brochures, there's, there's not a, a large difference. I guess it would just say your presence and it shows your commitment in a way. Um, Anything, any type of educational materials, it'll have the county's logo on it. Um, I would say it's just a support um, to the region, to communities within Champaign County, um, showing that the county is just as committed as you know the nine other entities in this. So I think there's a big di co commitment difference between a financial contribution and a resolution, but you all probably are aware of that. All right, Patsy. Um. I'm on the City of Champaign website <coughs> here. And um, I think my main question to you now, uh, and I don't see it, but it may be here and I haven't clicked on the right highlighted place. What is the timeline we need to be considering in relationship 
to moving this along? Timeline to consider. Um, meaning, when is our application going to go in? How soon do you need the money from us? Oh, um, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. Um, no, that's. I don't think that's not important in this scheme of things. This is going to take six months or longer from US EPA to give us this designation. Um, so, you. So, so the bottom line. You is, have kind of as long as you want. I guess. Bottom I line is things are moving along whether we join in or not. Correct. correct. Yes. And you just want more and more people to move along with this, and the more and more people yes. move along, the less and less our designated contribution would be. Right, but you'll get a refund check, I guess, if you want to call yes, it, exactly. when, when if, if other counties decide to join. If you reach out to your you know, friends or colleagues in other county boards and encourage them to join, you, you would get a, um, a reimbursement at some point. Um, I forget. So, but to US EPA, public participation and public support will get us this designation. Not having public support and public participation, we will not get this designation. If there's a ton of negative support, not going to happen. This is not something that they want to force on people at all. Okay. So, so your name on the letter is huge. You're one fourteenth of this of these counties involved in this. Okay, I understand all that. Uh, what is the uh, date uh, for the submission of the application? This week. All right, and what is the best estimate of a response from US EPA to this application? Six months. Six months. Okay, thanks. A limit, a minimum of six months. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm gonna go with Mr. Harper next and then I have Mr. Kibler again. I'm uh, sure everyone sitting here in the building and everything does not want to contaminate the our drinking water or any water source we use. But I agree with Mr. J that where was the common sense? And we have supposedly the Clinton landfill was EPA approved, right? It goes back to that DeWitt County made the decision to uh, do this. It's not that US, it's not that Illinois EPA didn't look at the facts or didn't evaluate it correctly. They look at the information they're presented with. But if everything I've read on that, it was an EPA approved project, which where was the common sense there? So now we want to spend money with another EPA project to fight it. It sounds like <coughs> typical government here to me, but that's just my comments. All right, Mr. Kibler. Yes, thank you. Just quick clarification on, on what the actual motion is. So I think the original motion was to give 14000 but then there's a motion then to delay it until... No, the original motion is to pass this to the county, county full board. board without recommendation. Without any recommendation um, whatsoever. Okay. In other words, we're passing it to ourselves without a recommendation. <laughs> okay, fair enough. And so in that case, um, I guess final question since you're here today. You know, on this sheet, you've got $14,000, but then you also have the cost share of not to exceed 64000 what are you looking for the county board to give? Is it just up to sixty-four thousand, or is fourteen thousand okay to start with? What, what's the re what are you hoping to get out of it? The entire project is sixty-five thousand. Okay. The county share of that sixty-five thousand is fourteen thousand. It's based on your population, oh, okay. so it's the Champaign County's population less Champaign, Urbana, and Savoy. So and the, that's, that's a not to exceed. Not to exceed because the, the sixty-five thousand is not to exceed. Okay. Because there's so, a phase three, and if the EPA has no questions with our report, you wouldn't pay phase three, which your cost would go down, or if more groups join, your cost goes down. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Langenheim. Okay, Mr. J. I'll be quick, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I've got a hypothetical situation. I just got my federal crop insurance check, and I want to put it on a, on a new piece of irrigation equipment that's going to draw water out of that aquifer. Am I, have I got any concerns? No. Guaranteed. Would you give me that in writing? Um, I can ask your specific question to US EPA, but none of that had anything to do with federal funding, funding of a project. So you receive the money from your crop subsidies? So uh, it's federal crop insurance. Federal crop insurance. 
is what you got the money for. What you choose to do with it, that's your, that's your choice. You're I'm not, going to go into their aquifer. It doesn't matter. This designation has nothing to do with quantity. Well, if I could have that so, writing, it would really make me feel a lot better, although I don't have an irrigation system at this but, time. But, but what I'm yeah. saying is that if you buy the irrigation with, irrigation with some indirect federal money, you're not going to trigger review because you did not receive money from the federal government to put that irrigation system in. You would have to apply for a grant or federal money to then receive that money specifically for that project to trigger review. It doesn't matter where you got this other money from. Give me your card so I can use it if I get in trouble. <laughs> I'm done, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. And you Thanks. all are more than welcome and encouraged, and Deb has my contact information. We have direct contact with US EPA Region 5. I send them questions that I receive from the public daily. Um, like I said, they may come to town to help answer some questions. We have a consultant that can come give you a presentation. His full presentation's online on our YouTube channel, on our website, that's on the bottom of that page I gave you. Um, Yes, and there's there's further question and answers on there. My contact information's on there. All right, I, I, I'm i gonna say that I would suggest that we go ahead and approve this and send it on to full board and give people time to digest things and maybe develop other questions. If we get to the full board and we feel like we need to hear from the consultant, um, that can be scheduled for our next policy meeting in January. So um, I don't think anybody should feel rushed by voting to move this to the, the full board. Yeah, and you can watch that presentation that was at our count, at Champaign's meeting, City of Champaign's meeting. It would be the same one you would get, um, but you could watch it ahead of time to just kind of prepare yourself for when you do take a vote. You may have all the information you need. Okay, thank you. I would like to call the vote on this. Uh, remember, you're voting to pass this along without recommendation, so it will not be on consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Okay, the, the last thing uh, for policy is the chair's report. Um, I'd like to use this time to make a couple of comments. First of all, as for, for the benefit of maybe some of the new board members, as we're having conversations like this, um, it is helpful if you decide you want to speak to you know raise your hand until the chair acknowledges you and puts you on the list. So if, if you want to speak, go ahead, keep your hand up, try to make eye contact contact with the with the chair. Um, as far as uh, policy items, uh, if you have items that you would like to see addressed in the policy portion of the cow, I would request that you communicate them to me or to Deb uh, by the Monday a week prior to the cow meeting because we will likely be meeting late in the afternoon on that Monday to set the uh, cow agenda. Um, and you are always welcome, uh, I think, to ask for administrative support in developing items to appear on the agenda if you need help with language for um, legislation or resolution or just how to present something for, for the cow uh, policy agenda, um, Deb will or her staff will be glad to help. I will be glad to talk to you about it. Um, one, one thing that, that I do wanna make it clear that if you have an item you feel strongly about and you advance it for the agenda, um, just because it's put on the agenda does not necessarily imply that um, I or other folks are going to advocate for it. it. It's important that if you feel strongly about something and you're developing something, you go out and you get the help um, from the administrative staff if you need it, um, and that you do uh, your own bit of advocacy uh, for the item to make sure that it's gonna get consideration, and that, that includes reaching out to individual board members uh, beforehand. Just because it's on the agenda does not imply that it's something that will be automatically supported. So thank you. I look forward to working with you all for the next two years. Ah, yes. Uh, I have for, oh, one, one moment, Al. For consent, I have uh, A, two, three, four, and five, seven, eight, and nine. I have B3, and I have, well, that's it. Um, Mr. Alex, for finance. Uh, 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, before we get started on finance, that was a lengthy and I think good discussion. Uh, I'm wondering, does everyone want to continue or would anyone request a short recess? Okay. I'd like to do a five minute recess if we could. <laughs> Okay, folks, if we could start uh, working our way back to our seats so we can get started, that'd be great. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome to the uh, Committee of the Whole for Finance. Our first item on the agenda is the report from the Treasurer. Uh, first, we have uh, his monthly reports. Thanks very much. Uh, I'd also like to thank you for the new seating. It's, uh, I won't miss those benches, I can assure you that. <laughs> yeah, well, it did keep me awake, but uh, didn't feel any, wor any worse better at the end of the meeting, though. Yeah, my monthly reports uh, is uh, placed on my website, and I have one uh, one item to talk about in that report. Uh, as you well know, the uh, tax anticipation warrants for the nursing home were let out, and in December 3rd, the closing <coughs> occurred. Uh, 914,000 is what the nursing home tax anticipation warrants were this year. Uh, we sent out about a little over 20 different bids to banks, bid letters. Got five responses, and the uh, bid was very good, 0.7, sorry, 0.75%. So the, uh, the two bonds will be due, one ju due July 15th, and one due September 30, each $457,000. So that's the only part of my report that I'd like to comment on. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to entertain those. If not, I'd ask that the report be accepted and placed on file, please. Uh, motion by Ms. Petrie, second by Mr. Mitchell. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Those are be placed on file. Uh, next item is a resolution authorizing the county board chair to assign a mobile home tax sale certificate of purchase for parcel number 30590030. Uh, may I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Mr. J and Mr. Kibler. Uh, any discussion? Ms. Petrie. It's just an information question. Um, are the numbers of these type of sales run about the same every year? Do we peak at certain desperate times of the economy? You know, each year, the, the numbers will vary as far as how many of them actually get assigned to somebody. That's, that's, what this means is that this mobile home went to a tax sale because they didn't pay their taxes. No tax buyer at that tax sale bought those taxes. So then they go to the trustee, which is us, Champaign County, and it starts a redemption period of two years. The redemption period lasts, goes through the two years, no one redeems, no one comes in and pays the back taxes and gets them back up to snuff. So then they are, they go to a sealed bid auction. And in this particular case, no one bought them in the first year, the second year someone did meet the minimum bid of $695. So if you remember, we did three of these last month and one this month, we may not do another one for a year. We do the sealed bid auctions every year in July. So it, it'll spur some activity, but if you've seen some of the mobile homes, you can understand why they why they languish, I guess. Thank you. Any more comments? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next item is a resolution for authorization of signatures for the treasurer's accounts, collector's accounts, and investment in instruments. New elected officials means new signatures. May I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Quisenberry and Ms. Berkson. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, next, in a related vein, uh, resolution for authorization of facsimile signatures for the uh, Champaign County Treasurer's reports and Champaign County collectors, of report, uh, collector's accounts. May I have a motion? Uh, Esri and uh, James, uh, any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 
going to take one opportunity to uh, to encourage the new members as well as any member to, uh, if my office or myself can ever help you in any way, please come by. Sure, be glad to meet you, talk to you, let you know anything we can help you with. Well, we certainly appreciate you staying to the end of the meeting as always. So thank you. I love these chairs. <laughs> Thanks so much. Now a, a drum roll, please. An auditor. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Uh, I do believe, you have a monthly report? Sure, I believe you all have my report, and if you have questions, I'll try to answer them. Um, I had a couple of questions uh, from Mr. Maxwell. Uh, Gary, do you mind if I take these, or you want to ask them yourself? Okay, uh, I raised a couple of issues with the auditor's report. Uh, one was with regard to the uh, sheriff's uh, revenues, which uh, were significantly over budget. Mm -hmm. uh, I spoke to the sheriff, and he indicated that that was due to reimbursements from other yep. agencies. Uh, things like uh, deputies working football games. Uh, there are also some uh, uh, a deputy who was involved with the uh, drug court and uh, some deputies who were involved with the FBI uh, violent crime task force. And so we basically brought in more money for the sheriff's services than we than we expected. And he tends to budget conservatively. Um, the next question was about the uh, juvenile detention center uh, revenues, which uh, came in at about uh, on the order of. of um, I believe 60% of what was expected. Uh, the county administrator informed me that this was because we received a large payment in December of last year, which ended, which should have gone to the 2011 budget, ended up in the 2012 budget. Should have gone in 2012. Should have gone. I'm oh, sorry. Should have gone in, 20, in this year's budget in 2012, but was attributed to the previous year's Correct. budget. So <laughs> if you, I went back and looked. If you go back and look at the auditor's report for the equivalent time last year, you'll see that they are at 140%. Right. So the, over the two-year period, it, it added up. Uh, and then the final question was with regard to nursing home revenues. And uh, the nursing home revenues were at 80% of expected, which was somewhat concerning. And so I guess I had a question for you, if you're, if you're prepared to address this yet. Um, I went back and pulled the, nurse, the uh, auditor's report for the nursing home for the last 12 months, and it looks like the nursing home revenues are realized in essentially in big chunks. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that right. like they budget quarterly, or they account quarterly, and then it gets to you. So it looks like there's a time lag there. That and reimbursement. OK, because I saw like for the first. They get their money in big chunks. Yeah, for the first four months of last year, they were at 0% of budget. Then they were at right. 8%, 22%, then 45, 45, 45, 45 right. for four months. So it's obvious that this isn't. Exactly, it ramps you know. up. So do we, do we have a projection? I mean, are, obviously, they're not going to end up the year at 80%, right? I certainly hope not. But it all depends on, again, it, they get those big chunks of money, and when they get it, they come through and start paying bills and things like that. So um, I certainly hope it's going to come up. If it doesn't come up from 81%, you've got a lot of questions on your hands. All right. Well, thank you. That was the conclusion I came to, but I, I yeah. wanted to hear that it was essentially just a timing, pro primarily right. a timing problem in terms of how they reported the information to you. Yep. Uh, is there anything we can do to try to, you know, make that information flow in a more timely fashion, or would that be up to the nursing home? I don't even think it's really at the nursing home's hands. It's, you know, when they get their money from the state, from the federal government. Okay, so it has, um, so it isn't just a case of them not reporting the information no, to you. They really are getting it. Yeah, they're trying to do their job in a timely manner. Absolutely. Okay, I appreciate the clarification there. Uh, if there are no additional, oh, and I'm sorry, one more thing. Sure. Uh, I asked in the memo I sent out to the board if anyone objected to no longer receiving the paper copies of the auditor's detailed report. I got no one who said, please keep sending me this stack of paper. It is all online, right? I mean, I went yes. and found all this information online and it's searchable it and so forth. So I think uh, I would certainly enjoy not seeing the paper copies sent out. If everyone concurs to that, I am absolutely fine with that. I hear no objection. <laughs> uh, did anybody have any other questions for the auditor? Mr. Kibler. While you're here, Mr. Auditor, uh, Deb, too, just a quick question regarding the general corporate fund projection summary that was provided today and the auditor's report kind of out of sync in terms of revenue. Um, I guess this is purely projected, and is this a accrual base versus actual that's come in? Or? The, the auditor's report is not a projection. It no. is actual. It is pure, okay. Mine Why? is actual year-to-date is also there, but then I provide a projection 
based on historical trends and other issues as to where we think we'll end up at the end of the year. And we are not at the end of the year. There's still another month of revenues, even though we're in the fiscal year 2013, mm -hmm. December revenues will get posted to fiscal year 2012, and many expenditures will still get posted to 2012 as well. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Being no further discussion, I would entertain a motion to accept the report and place it on file. Mr. Quisenberry and Ms. Michaels, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. For your information, I left the purchases not following policy. And if you, anyone has any questions on that, I'd be glad to answer that as well. Ms. Petrie. Oh, well, I'm just echoing what we all say uh, various times. Um, I'd like, I'm glad to see the list not as large as it used to be. Wait until next month. <laughs> Okay, well then, to build upon um, Chair Alex's offer, uh, how can uh, we in the county board um, help change rules of the road or whatever is needed so that this doesn't happen with such abundance? Well, uh, the ones that you see on here are unique situations, I guess to say that's why it's a small list. Like, for example, uh, the previous circuit clerk didn't take the tax ID number when she went and bought the uh, microwave and refrigerator, and that's why that ended up on here for your uh, information. Um, she didn't know to do that after all those years? You'd have to ask her. Uh, I'd, I don't want to answer for another official. Um, <laughs> the uh, fiscal year 13 expenses that were on a credit card before, I've been told this is the second time that RPC has done this, and we've notified them to not spend money before the budget passes. Um, it's against the law to do that, and so uh, we've instructed them to follow the procedure and do it the right way. Uh, you know, failing to get a receipt on the uh, gas uh, there, we also talked to the person that did that and made sure they you know, reminded them to get their receipts. Um, the The last part there, the uh, attorney bill, basically that attorney doesn't do too much work for the, the, the fund that they are uh, uh, billing. And so that $10 fee, uh, basically either they just forgot to bill us or it's been sitting on someone's desk where they were waiting until they had more charges accrued to send to us and that's why it showed up. That's from uh, November of last year. And then the uh, Carl Physician Group, that $1,600, that's quite frankly, just because the nursing home okay. is behind in paying their bills. Yeah. All right. Okay. You. Next Very month, nice. you'll see lots of things from the nursing home because they get just the way that they work when they get that tax anticipation right. money, they're going to pay a bunch of old bills. Got so it. that's why it'll be three or four pages long. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to budget amendments and transfers, uh, we have some cleanup, uh, amend, uh, cleanup transfers for the 2012 budget. Uh, first is budget transfer 12-17, uh, moving uh, $8,509 from uh, unemployment insurance to property insurance. May I have a motion? Mr. Mitchell, second. Mr. Quisenberry, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Moving on to 12-18, uh, moving $6,539 for the coroner from temporary employee costs to lab fees. May I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Langenheim, Mr. Esri, uh, Mr. James. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. 12-20, uh, excuse me, 12-20, uh, or excuse me, 12-19, I'm new to this. Uh, highway, uh, moving $12,200 uh, from temporary employee costs to uh, support uh, cleanup expenses for decommissioning the diesel tank. Uh, we will get this money back from the state eventually, I, I understand. Mr. Maxwell, uh, motion by Mr. Maxwell, second by Mr. Jay, all in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chair, could yes, you I'm please sorry. ask for a discussion I'm before sorry, you Mr. go to voting? Get your you. hand up. Did you have a question? <laughs> In the interest of good government, thank you. Uh, Budget transfer 12-20 are for the administrator moving $6,995 from uh, salary expenses to the copier contract. Uh, may I have a motion? Mr. Mitchell, second. Mr. Esri, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 
uh, 12-21, uh, $4,300 for the circuit court, uh, moving money from full-time employee costs to professional services. Uh, may I have a motion? Mr. J and Ms. Michaels, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, item number, okay, now we're on to budget amendments. Again, these relate to the 2012 budget. Uh, item 12-70, uh, this is for uh, health uh, insurance. Uh, more dependents participated in the county insurance plan than we expected, but since they pay the premiums, uh, this is revenue neutral. This is for $169,449. May I have a motion? Mr. Mitchell, a second. Mr. James, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, number 12-71 for the recorder. Uh, more uh, recording fees were collected than budgeted. Personnel costs were higher than expected. Uh, we want to reallocate $1,500 for the recorder. Uh, may I have a motion? Mr. Esri and Mr. James. Uh, discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Uh, number 12-72 for the auditor. Uh, Ms. Wadley's buyout was not fully accounted for in, under the previous auditor in the budget. On the other hand, the state stipend wasn't accounted for either. Uh, the net result is a budget increase of $14,588 to reflect what actually happened last year. Um, I have a motion. Mr. Kibler and Ms. Berkson. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those... Mr. Quisenberry. Could you repeat those numbers, those figures again? Uh, yes. Uh, the, actually, I'm going to have to look at the budget amendment. Give me a minute. Uh, increased appropriations were $18,460. That was the, uh, the cost of the buyout, and the increased revenue was $3,872. That was the stipend, and the net result being $14,588. Any additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, next item is 12-75 for the treasurer. Uh, this has to do with uh, when uh, tax sale proceeds were contributed to the general fund. Uh, again, this is money that was essentially, this is an expense for the treasurer, but it was an expense that was sent to the general fund. Uh, the amount is $11,464. I may have a motion. Mr. Mitchell, second. Ms. Michaels, any discussion? Again, Ms. Quisenberry. What, what, you said 11,000? You're getting the net and the increased appropriation. Uh, uh, yes, okay. The, yeah, you're saying the difference. The actual appropriation increase is. It's 29,000 in appropriations and 18,420 in revenue for Thank you. a total of $11,464 in new expenditures, which are paid from the treasurer to the county. Uh, Hearing no more discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 12-76, uh, the treasurer earned $13 in interest. Uh, is everybody okay with that? So make a motion. Mr. Mitchell, <laughs> second. Mr. Esri, any discussion? Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? figure out what number that is. That was 10. Number 10. You're testing me. Uh, next item is uh, going, now we're mo moving to actual amendments to the 2013 budget, which is the one that we're in right now. 13-2 uh, for the sheriff. Uh, this is the money that was used to uh, purchase squad cars, which we approved last year. Uh, they didn't arrive until after the end of the fiscal year, so we need to encumber that forward into the uh, into this year, uh, the amount is $85,585. Uh, I see a motion by Mr. J, a second by Mr. Mitchell. Discussion? I guess I should mention that the cars have showed up and are in the process of being, uh, uh, having the lights and so forth installed in them as according to the sheriff today. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, next item is for the administrator. This relates to the improvements to this meeting room. Uh, I did note that the, uh, 
This is for $3,116 for additional equipment. And I'm going to let Deb explain what this is for. Um, this is for some additional um, audiovisual equipment. I believe it is what makes the live streaming possible that is going on this evening. And we were unable to get that all done by November 30th, so we have done it um, since the beginning of this fiscal year. I would also point out that the total project budget for this room came in at about $20,000 under what we originally told you, so we did well with the budget for it. <coughs> Certainly good news. Uh, Ms. Petrie, are you making a motion? Thank you. Uh, motion by Ms. Petrie, second. Mr. Quisenberry, any discussion? Mr. Uh, Ms. Petrie. Well, this is sort of tongue in cheek to Ms. Busey, but since you saved $20,000, can we now have snacks, healthy snacks? <laughs> That's completely at your discretion. <laughs> Mr. Quisenberry. <coughs> Yes, I, I'm curious. When we when we were talking about the plan, there was um, discussion of some additional, uh, I'll say TVs, but monitors, so that the audience would be able to see what what the presentation is, regardless of where they're sitting. Is that still to come, or um, is there something else we need to do? I believe our IT department and county clerk are still working on that. Mr. Mitchell. The live feed is is delayed. Is there a way that you can have enough bandwidth to accommodate that on a so that it's synced up? Um, the IT director and county clerk are both here. If either of them can answer that question, <laughs> we're going to speak together. We can do a chorus. There's a there's a delay um, built into the software, and because we're not hosting the streaming, we don't have uh, a lot of control over how it, the delay that you're going to get through the internet. We're actually uploading this to a service that's streaming it for us. The only way you'll notice it is if you're watching it here. In, the, in, 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 in this room, which we are, in this room, could we have a direct feed? In this room, once we, if we can get the, the details on the monitors worked out for in-room display, and we're still in discussions with the vendor and Andy and I and Deb about sort of what we feel is an appropriate solution for the room. If there is a video broadcast in this room that mirrors this, it will be in. It will be live. There won't be the delay on it. Okay, great. Thanks, Mr. Kibler. Do you have a question? Uh, yeah, just a clarification. This three thousand dollars does not include any of the. Um, the TV monitors per se, correct? It's all about the video cameras. So they, we'd be asked for more money in the future for the TVs or the this, monitors. This $3,000 is about a bridge and software which allows us to do the live streaming, correct? Correct. So any Good. future enhancements would be coming back to us in the future? It sounds like. Possibly not, depending on where the money comes from. If we have the money in our budgets to cover it, we don't need to bring it back to you guys okay. for approval. Fair. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Uh, our next item is related to the uh, Clinton PCB disposal lawsuit. Uh, we added $14,000 to the budget last year for legal expenses. As far as I can tell, we spent about $400 of it. Uh, so Ms. Busey is requesting to move the $13,642 that remains forward into the 2013 budget. And again, this is not related to the presentation we just heard from Champagne. This is the existing uh, lawsuit which we've been participating in. Um, Mr. Quisenberry has made a motion. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Maxwell, uh, is there additional discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are opposed? Okay, next item is for the RPC. Uh, this is a pass-through. Uh, the city of Champaign is going to give them uh, $50,000 for their tenant-based rental assistance program, and they're going to spend it. Uh, may I have a motion? Mr. James and Mr. Mitchell, is there discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign? Thank you. Uh, now to budget amendment. No, um, we're going to, excuse me, ready for the addendum. No. Uh, budget Amendment 13-6. Uh, this is for the downtown jail. Uh, this is uh, $5,960 of work, which we, auth which we authorized and I guess ordered last year, but hasn't been completed yet, so we just need to move that forward into 2013. Um, we have a motion from Mr. Kibler. Second. 
from Mr. Esri. Uh, is there discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, now I'll move to the addenda. Uh, we have item 16. Uh, this is for uh, solid waste management. Uh, this is for $72. Uh, may I have a motion? Mr. James, second. Uh, Mr. Esri, is there discussion about this $72? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. And finally, for 12-78, uh, this is uh, due to uh, invoices that were received after the end of the fiscal year for the Board of Health, uh, $12,058 of increased appropriations. May I have a motion? Ms. Uh, Ms. Michaels and Ms. Berkson, uh, is there discussion? If not, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Um, moving on to section D, uh, this is a request for approval of application of awarded acceptance of an Illinois recycling grant. Uh, the details on this were included in the packet. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I see uh, Ms. Monty is here tonight and has sat through this whole meeting waiting for someone to ask her a question. I guess may I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Esri and a second, please. Uh, Mr. Langenheim, thank you. Uh, please feel free to tell us anything you think we need to know. <laughs> Hi, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them. I'm not really expecting one, but it's simply a grant opportunity that I applied for on behalf of the county. Well, that was easy. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Thank you. Uh, on to the county administrator. The uh, <clears throat> general corporate fund uh, projection report for 2012 is before you um, at, at your desks tonight. Um, this is with 11 months of revenue in and probably 11 and a half months of expenditure in. Um, it's very similar to what it has been. At this point in time, the revenues that have improved in performance are um, income tax, where we are anticipating the possibility of receiving actually 13 payments in 2012 instead of just 12. And um, some of the general government, which is fees and fines, have improved. They're still negative over what they were budgeted, but they're better than what we had um, projected in earlier reports. So overall, it looks like we should receive 99% of the current budgeted revenue. Uh, the next page is on expenditures, and uh, we are still underspending in personnel. Looks like we will end the fiscal year that way. Um, underspending in commodities, and some of these are final. For example, postage, purchase document stamps, we know that those are final numbers for those expenditures. We still anticipate underspending in our utility services and overall all in all other services. You will note that in capital, um, that is always projected to be 100% spent, and now it's projected at 99,000 under on vehicles. That corresponds back to a budget amendment you just did to reappropriate funds in 2013 for vehicles that we did not receive. So overall, at this point, it looks like we could underspend our budgeted uh, expenditure by 604,000 coming in at just a little over 98%, which is typically we land somewhere between 98 and 98 and a half percent of total budgeted expenditures which on the third page then you see would then put us at an estimate of revenue positive for this fiscal year of 312,864, which is very good when you consider that we had $500,000 of revenue for this year posted to last fiscal year. So that's a fairly good thing. Um, it anticipates that we would end even uh, considering the outstanding loan to the nursing home at almost a 13% fund balance, which is at our goal, slightly above. And then the uh, budget change report is on the back page, which just lists all the changes that you have approved to the general corporate fund budget since it was first adopted um, last December. Ms. Petrie. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm quite interested in the underspending of the gas service and the electric service. Do you have any uh, 
idea why that might be happening? That projection has been that way all year long. We have anticipated that we would underspend on, on those line items, and I believe it's a combination of several things. Um, you know, the utility rates and the utilization and the weather um, all have okay. an impact on okay. where that ends up. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any additional questions for the county administrator? Do we accept those and place those on file? Yes, uh, may I have a motion to accept and place on file Mr. Quisenberry and Mr. Kibler? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Uh, Next item is a recommendation for approval of the collective bargaining agreement between Champaign County and the Corrections Unit. Uh, there has been a tentative agreement reached. Uh, this has not yet gone to a ratification vote. Uh, Ms. Busey informs me that the ratification vote will actually be tomorrow. So by the time this comes to the county board, we'll know whether we're going back to the drawing board or whether we can approve this. But at this point, I would ask for a motion to uh, forward this to the full board with a recommendation for approval. Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Quisenberry. Uh, is there discussion, questions for Deb about the process we used to get here? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And then uh, a specific portion of that uh, negotiation resulted in the, the bargaining unit agreeing that future corrections officers hired to accept this contract uh, will not be able to participate in the sheriff's law enforcement pension. That is a... Uh, a, a essentially a better pension fund uh, for law enforcement officers. However, it costs the county more and it costs the employees more. So for employees who are going to stay with the corrections uh, department for their entire career, it's good for them. But for people who leave early, it's not. Uh, the union, I guess, on balance felt that it was a good deal to opt out of this on behalf of future members. Uh, there is language, there's a resolution describing this. It's the yellow sheet that was handed that out, that's on the back of the economic parameters. Um, again, we'll have, uh, we'll have the, to the uh, complete language of this uh, contract will be at the full board meeting. Uh, are there any questions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Did you, I don't think I'm sorry. Motion. I, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm new to this. May I have a motion to send this to the full board with a recommendation for approval? Mr. Kurtz and Mr. Esri. Uh, now, is there any additional discussion now that we're doing this right? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Uh, thank you. That, uh, Mr. Quisenberry. Yeah, I, Mr. Alex, I would like to thank you for the extensive notes that you sent out prior to this meeting. It made it a lot easier to, to work through a fairly long agenda. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm glad it was use, glad it was useful. I have no chair's report. Uh, Mr. James. I want to say thanks also because I didn't take the place of the auditor's report I used to get. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes finance. Thank you, Mr. Alex. Thank you. I have to speak loud. Uh, the next item is uh, items deferred from the organizational meeting. Uh, I have some appointments that we're going to make here to uh, set up our standing committees, committee as a whole, and subcommittees and special committee assignments. This is what I was talking about early on, on how much uh, effort and work this will take from all of us to move forward and, um, and uh, take our obligations and responsibilities seriously. Uh, appointment of deputy chairs for each area of responsibility will be the first appointments. I'm deferring justice and social services to the... November 20th, county board member, December. while I will, what's that? December 20th. I'm sorry, what did I say? November. November. December 20th. Uh, for policy and personnel appointments, uh, Mr. Kibler as the deputy uh, chair, assistant deputy chair, and for finance, uh, Ms. Diane Michaels as assistant deputy chair. Do I need a motion for that? Or just a... Uh, it's your recommendation. It's my recommendation. And it's my appointment. So moved. So moved. Thank you. Second, Mr. Mitchell. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, standing committees are next. Uh, I will read first the vice chairs for standing committees, and then we'll move to the entire committee for the standing committees. Uh, for ELOC, um, I appoint Mr. Aaron Esri. 
and I'm deferring both county facilities and highway transportation to the December 20th county board meeting. Um, may I have a recommend? I have a recommendation. So moved by Mr. Mitchell, second by Mr. Kibler. Thank you very much. I'm going to get applause every time I say that right. Thank you, Jeff. <coughs> Maybe I'll just say Jeff. Would that be easier? Okay. All right. Um, so for Mr. Esri, um, all, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Mr. Esri. All right, we move now to the entire committee for standing committees. Uh, for ELOC, <clears throat> Mr. Ralph Langenheim will be the chair. I'll have Mr. Esri as vice chair. I have Ms. Berkson, Mr. Harper, myself, Mr. Kurtz, Ms. Petrie, and Mr. Schrader. I hope I pronounced that correct. I'm wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and those are my recommendations. So moved by Mr. Kibler. Second. By Mr. By Ms. Berkson. All right. All in, uh, all in, well, that's my recommendation. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. For county facilities, I have Mr. James as chair. Mr. Hartke, Mr. Kibler, Mr. Maxwell, Mr. Rosales, Ms. Schwartz, and Mr. Quisenberry will compose the County Facilities Standing Committee. Um, those are my recommendations. So moved, so move, Mr. Jay. Second. Second, Ms. Michaels. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Highway and transportation. I have uh, Ms. Lorraine Cowart as chair. I have Mr. Lloyd Carter. Ms. Chris, uh, Mr. Alex, Mr. Jay, Ms. Michaels, Mr. Mitchell, Mr. McGuire, and uh, Mr. Richards on highway and transportation. Those are my recommendations. So moved. so moved by Mr. Esri, second by Mr. James. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, now we go to subcommittees and special committees. And we're going <laughs> to start with the Labor Committee. And uh, my recommendations are Mr. Chris Alex is chair. Myself, Mr. Kurtz, Mr. Hartke, Mr. Harper, and Mr. Kibler on the Labor Department, uh, Labor Committee. May I have um, Mr. Mitchell first? Second? Second. Mr. Kibler. Those uh, are my recommendations. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Labor Management Health Insurance Committee. I have uh, recommended Mr. Alex and Mr. Harper. Mr. Alex and Mr. Harper. So moved. So moved by Mr. Kibler. Second. Second by Mr. Esri. Discussion? James. What? I oh, he's second. Oh, Mr. James, sorry. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Motion carries. Now come to the liaisons. I'm just going to go through this just quickly, all the names at one time. Um, I just want, and I hope it goes in the newspaper, that how many liaison assignments we have that put pressure and time consumption on our board. So let's move forward on liaison. For access initiative, Mr. Rosales. Champagne Consortium, myself, John Schrader, Josh Hockey is the alternate. Champagne Urbana Urbanized Area Transportation Study, Mr. Langenheim. Community Action Board, Mr. Rallos and Mr. McGuire. Convention and Business Bureau, Mr. Mitchell, Ms. Schwartz is the alternate. Development, the Developmental Disabilities Board, Mr. Richards and Mr. Maxwell. East Central Illinois Economic Development District, Mr. Richards. Lincoln Exhibit Committee, Mr. Langenheim. Lincoln Heritage, RNC and D, Mr. Schroeder and myself as alternate. County Board of Health, Mr. James. Economic Development Corporation, Mr. Schrader and Mr. Quisenberry. Extension Services Board, myself and Stan Harper. Head Start Policy Board, Ms. Michaels. Muhammad Aquifer Consortium, Mr. Langenheim, myself, and Mr. Maxwell. Mental Health Board, Ms. Astrid Bergson. Nursing Home Board of Directors, Mr. Hartke and Mr. Maxwell. Regional Office of Education, myself and Ms. Michaels. Regional Planning Commission, myself, Mr. Schroeder, Patsy Petrie, John Jay, and Rachel Schwartz as alternates. RPC Community Service Block Grant Loan Committee, Mr. Alex. Rural Transportation Advisory, Advisory Group, Mr. James, and Veterans Assistant Commission, Mr. Langenheim. These are my recommendations. Mr. Kibler, Mr. Maxwell. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> we're done with that. Other business? Public notice. Uh, proposed issuance of a federally enforceable state operating permit, Clifford Jacobs Forging Company in Champaign. Do I have a motion? No, you don't need this. What is do I, I don't need this? this, this is, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say. All right, public notice. This is for information only. Do we have a closed session that we have to go into? Oh, no. All right, so I, I ask for adjournment. Motion by Mr. Mr. Quisenberry, Mr. Hartke, Mr. Quisenberry. All in favor, going home. Who said no? Oh, Jesus.